Armenian Azerbaijan forces reach a ceasefire deal after two days of fighting flared in the Nagorno-Karabakh region. In New York, for the first time since Russia's war began, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky calls for more help and is forced to answer questions of his own. The UK is set to delay the introduction of some of its net zero policies, but says it is still on track to achieve its climate neutral goals by 2050. As world leaders gather in New York for this year's UN General Assembly, we ask experts how relevant and effective the institution really is today. To the relief of residents and the international community, a ceasefire for the separatist Nagorno-Karabakh region has been reached between Armenian and Azerbaijan forces. This after local officials said scores of people had been killed or wounded. Azeri soldiers on Tuesday used heavy artillery fire at so-called Armenian positions in the region in what Baku described as an anti-terrorist operation. They initially said they would continue their operation until the separatist government of Nagorno-Karabakh dismantled itself and illegal Armenian military formations surrendered. The agreement was reached through negotiations with the Russian peacekeeping troops in the area. According to the Azeri Defense Ministry, the deal contemplates the withdrawal of Armenian military units and equipment from Nagorno-Karabakh, as well as disarming the local defense forces. Meanwhile, thousands of protesters gathered in Yerevan on Tuesday to demand that authorities defend the ethnic Armenians living in the territory. Clashes broke out with the police and a total of 34 people, 18 civilians and 16 officers were reported to have been injured as a result. World leaders arrive in New York to listen to what Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has to say. It's the first time he has visited the United Nations headquarters since Russia's war begun. Facing a fragmented international community, he called to exclude Russia from the ranks of the UNSC. The Ukrainian peace formula is becoming global. Its points offer solutions and steps that will stop all forms of weaponization that Russia used against Ukraine and other countries and may be used by other aggressors. For the first time in modern history, we have a real chance to end the aggression on the terms of the nation which was attacked. Zelensky participated in many meetings, in particular with African leaders to discuss food security and also with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who questioned how aid money was being spent. What is the plan for victory? I think that's what the American public wants to know. Look, what Russia has done in Bade is wrong. It's an atrocity. And we want to make sure that ends. I also have always said from the beginning, no matter what the issue is, I want accountability for whatever the hardworking taxpayers spend their money on and, want to, and I want to plan for victory. Kiev demands more weapons and armament for its counteroffensive, which so far has had limited success. But it also needs other resources to protect civilian population and infrastructure from recurring Russian airstrikes. Pain, fire and destruction continue in Janine. Health officials on Wednesday confirmed five Palestinians were killed in the occupied West Bank. Four of them in the Janine refugee camp. Clashes broke out during an operation by the Israel Defense Forces aimed at capturing Palestinian militants. The soldiers were shot at and allegedly used suicide drones to neutralize the armed resistance. Around 30 people were wounded during the fighting. The Palestinian Authority has condemned the attack and now the region could face an escalation of fresh violence. France won't be taking in migrants from Lampedusa. That's according to Interior Minister Gerard Darmanin, who claims 60% of the new arrivals to the Mediterranean island are not eligible for asylum. This after thousands of migrants travelled to the island on small boats last week seeking refuge. In response, Darmanin visited his Italian counterpart in Rome on Monday to discuss how France might help its neighbour reinforce its external borders. 
further afield in Poland, those voting in October's general election will also face a controversial referendum on migration. Ale też chcemy wysłać wyraźny sygnał przestrogi, bo Lampedusa jest taką przestrogą. Cała Europa, cała Unia Europejska może wyglądać tak jak Lampedusa, jeżeli będziemy brnęli w te same błędy, w te same schematy i mechanizmy, które Komisja Europejska zaproponowała. Back in Italy, Premier Giorgio Meloni has announced extraordinary measures to deal with the influx, including more detention centres, repatriations and a naval blockade of North Africa. A request European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has not ruled out after her recent visit to the island. European business leaders' frustrations with China have surfaced again over uncertainty about bilateral trade rules. A report from the European Chamber in China says Beijing's new national security regulations are hindering foreign companies from operating freely there. In a meeting with Chinese delegates in Beijing, the chamber complained about mixed signals from the authorities. You cannot have it both ways. Which one is it? Is it the focus on ever higher degrees of national security, tightening regulatory regimes, focusing on self-reliance, as we had to assume at the expense of, of foreign companies, or is it this continued firm commitment to reform and, and, and opening up? Our question is, what kind of relationship is it? Those sentiments were echoed by the EU Commission's digital chief, Vera Jourova, in a meeting with officials in the Chinese capital on Monday. Tensions are also mounting over the EU's recent launch of a probe into Chinese sales of electric vehicles in Europe. Beijing rejects Brussels' claims of unfair subsidies. Both sides say they want to establish equitable and mutually beneficial trade relations. But balancing free-flowing business with contrasting approaches to regulations is proving extremely challenging. Will he finally commit to the... UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak reportedly preparing to water down key environmental policies. The Conservative leader is expected to postpone the deadlines for Britain's energy transition by five years. This includes the phasing out of gas boilers and the sale of new diesel and petrol cars. The news broke Tuesday on the eve of the United Nations Climate Ambitions Summit. Sunak says he will explain the delays and promises the leak will not stop him from telling the country how and why the change is needed. World leaders gather in New York this week for the 78th United Nations General Assembly to hold high-level talks on key global issues. Now we are rapidly moving towards a multipolar world. Russia's war in Ukraine and its far-reaching consequences are high on the agenda once again. But as geopolitical tensions mount and answers to the climate emergency remain elusive, experts say faith in the power of the UN is waning. There, where we see a lot of people lose faith are when they see those moments of um, hypocrisy or a lack of understanding of the way that the UN is able to continue to operate um, on one track while kind of the global community seems to be heading towards a crash on the other. While the UN is committed to maintaining its neutrality in the face of differences between member states, some analysts say that shouldn't rule out urgent institutional reform. The, the United Nations probably should be more cooperative to regional partners in order to be successful. Uh, how the UN can make this visible, that's obviously a question. But the UN is an old organization. It's going through large changes. The world is going through large changes. So that's evident that organizations, international organizations, should uh, change as well. And uh, it's their priorities uh, might not change. Kim Jong-un's recent visit to Russia stoked Western fears about possible North Korean military support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and with it, 
skepticism of what the UN could do to stop it. Las Naciones Unidas va a utilizar mucha retórica, pero eh, a nivel efectivo no va a poder llevar a cabo ningún tipo de, de instrumento para frenar este acuerdo con, entre Rusia y Corea del Norte. Entonces, ¿es eh, eficaz? No es eficaz. Es verdad que se ha reformado, bueno, hay un proceso de reforma eh, que la ONU está intentando desde hace ya muchos años, además, conoce sus debilidades en ese sentido, pero obviamente es incapaz de reformarse a sí misma, puesto que estos miembros con derecho de veto lo impiden constantemente. The house where iconic French singer Serge Gainsbourg spent the last years of his life is now open to the public. An undisputed star of the francophone music industry, the artist died in 1991 in this building on Rue Verneuil in Paris. Through emotional and personal anecdotes, Charlotte Gainsbourg, the singer's daughter, guides visitors on a journey through the house, allowing them to enter the intimacy of the family and see the home as it was left 30 years ago. A hundred thousand visitors a year are expected to visit the museum, and bookings already sold out until the end of 2023. The majority of Spain's World Cup winning female footballers have ended their boycott of the national team. Their return comes as the Spanish government helped draft an agreement which it says should lead to structural changes within the sport's national federation. Last week, 39 players agreed to boycott the national side until the federation was restructured. The fallout stems from last month's Women's World Cup final, when former president Luis Rubiales kissed forward Jenny Hermoso on the lips. Hermoso says the kiss was not consensual. 